Aaron, what is our second main topic today? Our second main topic comes to us from Dr. Nick. I just learned that Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is expanding to 1,500 theaters in February. This movie is not only the Citizen Kane of bear horror movies, but it is also an experiment in regard to IP that has just entered the public domain. What do you all think of this move? All right, this, uh, this is interesting. Now, for those of you who have not heard of it, and you can be completely forgiven if you have not, there's a little movie calling called Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. The basic premise is this. Christopher Robin leaves the 100-acre wood, grows up, goes off, then ends up going to college, whatever, and finally, after years, comes back to the 100-acre wood, only to find that Winnie and Piglet have gone mad. They've killed the other members of the 100-acre wood, and now they are hunting people and eating people. And now that they heard that Christopher Robin is back, who they feel abandoned them, they're after him and his girlfriend now, too. It looks ridiculous, and I cannot wait uh, to watch this thing. Now, this was because Winnie the Pooh is in the public domain. Anybody can make a Winnie the Pooh movie. As long as you don't steal things from other Winnie the Pooh material that was created by those uh, storytellers, as long as you're only drawing from the original source material and creating your stuff around it, you're good. You, We can make a Winnie the Pooh movie this afternoon if we wanted to. So they're making Blood and Honey. Now, it was going to play in theaters for one day in a limited number of theaters. Well, Taylor has talked about it so much <laughs> that the folks at Fathom Events said, nah, screw that. We're going to play this for over a week on 1,500 screens. 1,500 screens for a movie that probably costs less than what we will pay for lunch today. Um, it was just somebody that just bought a mask at the out of the discount bin at Target and said, this looks good. Let's make a movie out of it. Sure. And you know what? I'm thrilled. I I would love this. I would love for this movie. Look, it's going to be absolute hot garbage, but I would love for this movie to end up being awesome fun and have it make like $20 million. I would, I just love little stories like that. These little movies that could. There's a good, and no, that's not supposed to be a man in the mask. That is supposed to be Winnie the Pooh. No. Yes. <laughs> it's not a man running around in a Winnie the Pooh mask. That's oh. Winnie the Pooh. Somehow he's a biped. And now he's by So there you go. Uh, uh, I have to ask, Taylor, mm -hmm. uh, where's your joy level at, at this point? Because I know you, you've you been kind of single-handedly carrying the torch for this movie. Well, first of all, you're welcome, everybody. I feel like <laughs> I did have a big part in this. I am so excited for this. I already was going to go see it the one night it was coming out, February 15th. But now I can go again and again and trick Chris into going with me. It's going to be the Battle of the Bears, though, because February we have Cocaine Bear and we have Pooh. So there's going to be Pooh Watch. It's all bear action. All bears all the time. Not, I, I'm not into bears, but these bears oh, I'm very excited for. <laughs> You you set that up. You I, that, that was up. unintentional. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Uh, Rob, you hear about the 1,500 screens for over a week for Winnie the Pooh. Uh, what uh, What do you think? Look, anyone has that has the gumption to go out and make a low-budget film, much less mm -hmm. what could be a meme movie. Uh, the way horror is going now, horror is hot. And God bless these filmmakers for, for grabbing an idea and, and implementing that idea, making it happen. I love the fact, I hope this movie, like you, John, makes $25 million. I hope they get paid. I hope the distributors can't help but pay them. Uh, God bless them. And I'll tell you something. I hope this movie's fun. You know, there was a movie that uh, when I was a kid called Blood Sucking Freaks that still deserves me to this day. But I hope it's the Blood Sucking Freaks for 2023. I really do. Because kids today need that kind of exploitation in their lives. <laughs> Christian, what do you think? I mean, it's clearly not something that I want to ever see. But it's... it's You're not going to take your kids to go see this? No. My, my, it's so funny you say that. My, my daughter was literally watching Winnie the Pooh yesterday. And I'm like... <laughs> and, I, and, for a, I'm like and I'm watching and I'm wa and thinking about it going... I. I understand. Look, here's what Rob just said. Somebody with a you know a, a warped sense of humor, and I think, what if we, as like you said, grab a mask, shoot this movie, and not only did they do it, and they make a movie, it's getting a lot of notice. I mean, you're covering it on your show. You know, there's there's how good is it, I mean look, that shot right there. It's I creepy. would see this it, movie based it, on it, that shot. And, alone. But but it's getting. But the thing is that it's stuff like that that it's getting 
people's attention. And so good for them for that. And the idea of them moving in into 1500 theaters, maybe they're thinking that it's going to be something like, um, you know, a Rocky Horror Picture Show type thing where they can have people and have this big event. And if it works, they do it again and they give it a shot. So the idea of everything behind it, I think, is pretty encouraging, especially in a day where it takes a lot to get a movie into the theater to get people to see it in general, that this is that getting that kind of recognition. I want nothing to do with it. But it has nothing. To, but that's not me. This this isn't for me. This is for people like, like you said. You would just sit down, have some fun, watch the 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 carnage and the nonsense, and good for them because that's a that's it's a feat for what they did for sure. By the way, if they don't have Winnie the Pooh swing an axe at some college girl, and she dodges it and runs into the woods, if they don't have then Winnie the Pooh say, "Oh bother," it is oh, a missed got, opportunity. Right, right. Oh, I I bet he's they got will. It. Oh, it'll be a missed opportunity. Aaron. Uh, I mean, the very first movie you ever brought little Tommy to was our uh, the Batman screening. Yeah. Will this be the next? Um, probably. <laughs> he, as the mother of a 14-month-old child who has a Winnie the Pooh, uh, Mr. Pooh Bear, and a Tigger, uh, I am thrilled about this. I think it is fantastic. <clears throat> Tom was very upset. He said, what about the children? And I was like, stop clutching your pearls. The kids aren't watching this, but the parents are going to. Um, the The... The bigger question that, uh, you know, I, I think our wonderful viewer was really wondering is, what does this mean for IP? You know, this year, 2023, uh, means that anything from 20, from, excuse me, 1927 is now in the public domain. And the purpose of the public domain, the reason why it was created was really to uh, preserve copyright for the purposes of encouraging more creativity and so innovation that, yeah. and innovation so that an idea doesn't you know a movie doesn't come out and then 10 years later someone just goes yeah i'm going to do the exact same thing you have to go back and get the copyright laws and i mean the copyright for it etc so the whole purpose of it was so that hollywood didn't just cr keep making the same movies and books etc and so now that we are entering a period where uh at the time of talkies in the 19 you know 1920s into the 1930s the time of talkies really revolutionized the movie industry and the, and so we're going to see a lot more uh things that people are familiar with entering the public domain. So while this is just the very beginning, it's going to be really interesting as we move forward. You know, some of the things that uh, I was just looking at the list, The Jazz Singer, which was the first feature length film with synchronized dialogue that gets into public domain. Um, the Sun Also Rises, uh, 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 that's also entering the public domain. The movie uh, Gangs of New York, if anybody ever thought about, oh, wait. That's movies just already been done. Kidding. No, but that also enters public domain. So I think I do think that the next 10 years is especially are going to be very interesting for familiar titles that we now see entering public domain. But for anybody out there that's saying there's no original movies in Hollywood, man, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, go for it. You know, John, to speak to that, there's also a copyright rule that says if you've written an original screenplay the rights to that screenplay revert back to the original author after 35 years. Yes. So we are seeing a lot of our franchise properties. Like for instance, there was a legal case that was recently somewhat decided. I believe it's Victor Miller who wrote the original script for Friday the 13th. Yeah, well, we talked about that on the show. Yeah, and he got that. And other, other franchise properties, Predator, Die Hard, a lot of these uh, franchise properties are now reverting back to their original authors. There is a lawyer in town who specializes in then soaking the studios. He goes back and says like, hey, you wanna make this, you gotta pay. So it's an interesting idea that, that so once they make Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, what I wanna know is that movie they've made is copywritten because the underlying rights to the character aren't copywritten, but like you said, you can't go make a Winnie the Pooh movie and make it look like something Disney owns. But now by making this movie, you can't go make a Winnie the Pooh movie and make Yeah, Pooh we can't like, make a Winnie the Pooh slasher movie now. Yeah, that yeah. looks like Blood and Honey. And it's very interesting to see how that IP is going to work as we move through time. All right, guys. Question is for you. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is going to get a wider release than some major Hollywood films. It's going to be on 1,500 <laughs> screens, play for a week. Uh, by the way, which is uh, more screens and in theaters longer than Glass Onion did. Uh <laughs> Hello, Netflix. Anyway, what do you guys think about this? Jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, 
Rocket Money. Do you know how much your subscriptions cost? Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, when the actual total is closer to $200. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, you need Rocket Money. When I started using Rocket Money, I couldn't believe how many things I was still paying for. Anna and I haven't lived in Burbank for almost two years, and I didn't realize I was still paying for a gym membership in Burbank for two years. Rocket Money, for Formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they've forgotten about, like that streaming service you bought to watch just one show on, or that free trial that you never even used, or like me, a gym membership in Burbank. Simply find the subscriptions you don't want and press cancel, and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. So stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com campia. That's rocketmoney.com campia.